सो द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज ईसोफेगस Esophagus extends from C6 to T11. So here we can see this is esophagus. This is stomach. This is diaphragm. Esophagus extends from C6 to T11 and it extends from neck in chest. and the lower portion of the esophagus reaches the abdomen so what is the total length of esophagus the total length is 25 cm it extends from c6 to t11 there are total 3 constrictions and what are those three constrictions first constriction is at the cricopharynx second constriction is at the arch of aorta or where the left bronchus crosses the esophagus and the third constriction is at the level of diaphragm so uh, what is the level of the three constrictions it is at is at 15 cm 25 cm and at 40 cm so what is the epithelium of esophagus esophagus is lined by stratified non keratinized squamous epithelium so it is lined by stratified non keratinized squamous epithelium and the most common type of malignancy in esophagus is squamous cell carcinoma of esophagus now coming on to the type of muscle the upper one third of esophagus is having stratified muscle the lower one third is having smooth muscle and in the middle one third there is a transition from stratified to smooth muscle now how to remember this upper one third esophagus we can control the swallowing first we will study the anatomy of esophagus so as we all know that esophagus is an organ which extends from the neck going through our chest into the stomach and it traverses neck chest and abdomen so there is cervical esophagus thoracic esophagus and abdominal part of esophagus what is the length of esophagus esophagus is 25 cm in length it extends from c6 to t11 and how many constric constrictions are there in esophagus esophagus is having total of 3 constrictions the first constriction these three constrictions are at 15 cm 
25 centimeter and at 40 centimeter these 15 centimeter 25 centimeter and 40 centimeters is counted from the upper incisors and this 15 centimeter constriction is at the level of cricopharynx this 25 centimeter one is at the level of arch of aorta and left bronchus and it is also known as the bronco aortic constriction and this 40 centimeter constriction is at the level of diaphragm now what is the epithelium of esophagus so esophagus is lined by stratified non keratinized squamous epithelium it is stratified non keratinized squamous epithelium regarding the muscle of esophagus as we all know we can control the swallowing that is in the cervical esophagus so we the upper one third of the esophagus is having stratified muscle and the lower one third of the esophagus is having smooth muscle and the middle one third there is transition from stratified one to the smooth muscle so the upper one third is having stratified muscle the lower one third is having smooth muscle and the middle one third is transition from stratified to to smooth muscle now there are few features which are not seen in esophagus and are seen in other parts of the gastrointestinal tract like esophagus is not having serosa it is not having villi there is no secretions and there is no mesenars plexus so all these are the questions which are already asked ki there is no serosa no villi no secretions and there is no mesenars plexus the only plexus which is there in esophagus is the oribex plexus now there is another unique feature of esophagus and that is there is lymphatics in the lamina propria there is presence of lymphatics in lamina propria normally in the gastrointestinal tract the lymphatics are present in the submucosa but in esophagus the lymphatics are present in both lamina propria and submucosa and this is the reason why there is very early spread or very early lymph nodal spread in carcinoma esophagus now what is the narrowest part of git so the narrowest part of git is the cricopharynx which forms the upper esophageal sphincter which is present at level of 15 cm from the incisors 
so what is the clinical application of this narrowest part of the git whenever there is any foreign body injection majority of the foreign bodies they are present at the level of cricopharynx most common site of foreign body impaction is the cricopharynx and in case if the foreign body has passed through the cricopharynx in, in majority of the cases it will pass through rest of the gastrointestinal tract also so there is no need to do any active intervention if there is no symptoms and we can wait and watch till the foreign body passes through the gastrointestinal tract so there are few points i would like to mention regarding the upper esophageal sphincter and the lower esophageal sphincter so upper esophageal sphincter is formed by three muscles which is cricopharynx distal portion of inferior pharyngeal constrictor and upper part of esophagus upper part of circular muscles of esophagus what is the length of upper esophageal sphincter it is 4 to 5 cm in length and what is the pressure it is 60 mm of mercury so the upper esophageal sphincter is formed by the inferior part of the pharyngeal constrictors then there is cricopharynx and then there is esophagus circular muscles of the esophagus and it extends from 4 to 5 cm in length and the pressure is 60 mm of mercury now regarding the lower esophageal sphincter the length total length of lower esophageal sphincter is 5 cm 5 cm is the total length the intraabdominal length is 2 cm this is the intraabdominal length and the pressure is 6 to 26 mm of mercury so these three po points regarding the lower esophageal sphincter are very important and in case if there is reduction in the total length of the lower esophageal sphincter or the length of the intraabdominal esophagus or reduction in the pressure all these three factors can lead to the development of gerd so this is very important point which we need to consider now this is the diagram regarding the anatomy of esophagus we can see here that the esophagus extends from the upper esophageal sphincter to the lower esophageal sphincter and it extends from the neck through the thorax into the abdomen now what is this uh, how we divide the esophagus into different parts so the uh, cervical esophagus is 5 cm in length and it extends from upper esophageal sphincter to the sternal notch this upper thoracic esophagus is 5 cm in length and it extends from the sternal notch to the esophagus vein okay now this middle thoracic esophagus is 5 cm in length 
it extends from zygous vein to the inferior pulmonary vein and this lower thoracic esophagus it extends from the inferior pulmonary vein to the GE junction so this is very important how we divide different types different parts of esophagus but how we can remember the simple thing is the cervical esophagus is 5 centimeter the total thoracic esophagus is 20 centimeter which is 5 plus 5 plus 10 and this intra abdominal part is 2 centimeter and uh, this cervical esophagus is extending from upper esophageal sphincter to the sternal notch this is extending from upper esophageal sphincter to the sternal notch then from the sternal notch it is still the level of azygous vein then from the level of azygous vein the middle thoracic esophagus is still the inferior pulmonary vein and from the inferior pulmonary vein to the lower esophageal sphincter or the GE junction there is lower thoracic esophagus. Now what is this diagram how to understand this diagram is for the upper esophageal sphincter the upper esophageal sphincter is formed by inferior constrictor muscles the cricopharyngeal muscles and the upper portion of circular muscles of esophagus now in between there are presence of two gaps or dehiscence the gap between the cricopharynx and inferior constrictor muscle is known as the Killian dehiscence. You can see here the gap between the inferior constrictor muscle and the cricopharyngeal muscle is the Killian dehiscence and the gap between the cricopharyngeal muscle and the circular muscle fibers is the Lamer's dehiscence. So here we can see the Killian's dehiscence and the Lamer's dehiscence. This Killian's dehiscence is the site for Zenker's diverticulum. Or in other words, this Zenker's diverticulum occurs from the gap between the inferior constrictor muscles and the cricopharyngeal muscles. This diagram is regarding the blood supply of esophagus. Now as you can see here, esophagus extends from the neck to the abdomen and it receives branches from everywhere, from the neck also, from the chest also and from the abdomen also. So this cervical esophagus is re receiving the branches from inferior thyroid artery, from the inferior thyroid artery and this thoracic esophagus, it receives branches from the bronchial arteries both the bronchial arteries and direct branches from the aorta these are the direct branches and this abdominal esophagus it receives branches from the left gastric artery from the ascending branches of the left gastric artery so now 